And so Darwin arrived at an astonishing conclusion, one that would become central to his understanding of the great diversity of life. Darwin had this amazingly bold idea, the tree of life, that all species were connected. And what it meant was, if you go far enough back in our family tree of humans, you'll come to fish. If you go far enough back in the family tree of birds, you'll come to dinosaurs. So that creatures that don't look anything at all like each other are actually deeply connected. No one came close to having this idea before Darwin. This seemed to be an explanation for the vast diversity of animals. Beginning with a common ancestor over time, across generations, species could change dramatically. Some might add new body features. Others might drop them. Ultimately, one type of creature could be transformed into something utterly different. It's a process Darwin called descent with modification. But it all begged a question, why? What was making creatures change? Darwin needed clues, and he found them in a very surprising place. Dogs, big, small, fat, tall. The British have long been obsessed by them. It was a full-blown love affair in Victorian England. Even Her Majesty was dog crazy. That love affair still continues today, especially among scientists like Heidi Parker at the National Institutes of Health. So one of the most interesting things about dogs is the kind of variation that you have and we have dogs the size of groundhogs versus a dog like Zeppi, the Leonberger, who can get to be the size of a mule deer. If we had that kind of size variation in humans, we would have people running around the size of Barbie dolls. In his day, Darwin knew this range of sizes hadn't come about by chance. Through a careful process of selection, dog breeders mix different dogs with different physical traits to create new forms. Darwin was intrigued by what he was seeing breeders doing with the domestic dog. They could select for individual traits like size or shape, and they could actually change their breed. The Whippet, for example, had been developed to chase rabbits. It was created by mixing greyhounds for speed with terriers used to hunt small game. And then it hit Darwin. Was there a similar form of selection going on in nature, but without human interference? Could natural selection explain the great diversity of life? It was brilliant. He took something very familiar and comfortable, for example, animal breeding, and explained that the same sort of thing was going on in nature, uh, just at a little bit different pace and with no uh, human guide. 